Effects of Mercury on Fish and Humans. Brought to you by Casey Cruz, Brooke Sommerfeld, and Samantha Lehman. Applied Science 101. Mercury is distributed throughout the environment. Natural concentrations have always been present in our air, water, and soil. These concentrations have been estimated to average 100 parts per billion, or PPB, in soil, 0 0.06 PPBs in fresh water, and 0 0.003 to 0 0.009 micrograms per cubic meter in air, according to Hugunin and Bradley of 1975. As a result of industrial uses and agricultural applications, significant local increases above natural levels have been recorded. Major contributors to the increased amount of mercury in the water include wastewater from sewage plants, paper mills, and mercury ore processing facilities. This is according to Klein's report on mercury in the environment. Mercury is toxic and it has adverse effects on fish and the aquatic system ecosystem in general. Chemically, mercury can be defined as a metal. Its atomic weight is 200.59. It's a liquid at room temperature, it is very dense, and it's relatively chemically stable. And it is also considered to be a good electrical conductor. Its symbol on the periodic table is Hg. Although it is not as common today, mercury has been used in thermometers. It is more commonly used in barometers, which measure atmospheric pressure. To get back on the subject of mercury and the water, let's take a look at how mercury affects species below fish on the food chain. For example, algae. The effects of mercury on algae vary. Most of these variations are because of the differences in the species of algae. The main effect is on its growth. Mercury inhibits the growth of the algae, which means that a lake with mercury in it will have the same amount of algae just much smaller in size. Another common fish food in an aquatic environment is zooplankton. These are very sensitive to mercury contamination. According to the study done by Basinger in 1974, the mercury actually slows the reproduction rate considerably. Now that we have covered how the mer mercury levels affect the aquatic ecosystem, let's get into how it directly affects fish and he humans. Mercury gets into fish from mercury-contaminated water passing over their gills or from the fish consuming an organism that has been contaminated by mercury itself. Fish can actually eliminate mercury in their body, but this is done at a very slow rate, so gradually the concentrations will build up. This means that larger and older fish will have higher mercury levels because they have either been in the contaminated water longer or they have eaten a lot of the contaminated species. This also means that Wisconsin game fish, such as walleye, northern pike, large and smallmouth bass, and muskie, may contain these higher mercury levels. The worst part about the mercury that a fish absorbs is that it's stored mostly in the muscle tissue, which is the part of the fish that humans consume. Along with this high mercury level in fish come some problems. The mercury can lead to an inability for the fish to reproduce. For a heavy fishing state like Wisconsin, this can be very detrimental. We need fish in our ecosystem for other animals like eagles, turtles, and loons. Mercury can also lead to an early death and also weight loss. This is all in accordance with the Department of Environmental Protection. So how does mercury affect us as humans? These effects have been well documented. A disease called Mad Hatter Syndrome was caused by a mercury compound that was used to treat the felt in hat making. The hat makers experienced symptoms such as erratic behavior, trembling hands, and odd jerky movements. The part of the human body that is most affected by mercury is the central nervous system. It has been discovered that fetuses that are still developing are extremely sensitive to mercury. A lack of coordination, numbness in your lips and mouth, night blindness, and a lower sense of taste and smell are all symptoms of mercury poisoning. Also, mercury poisoning and autism has, have also been linked. Although it is rather difficult for adults to have such symptoms from mercury, like previously stated, 
fetuses and young children are much more vulnerable. According to the EPA, the ingestion of mercury by a pregnant woman or a young child could lead to impaired neurological development. For a pregnant woman, consuming mercury from fish can impair the growth and development of your, of your soon-to-be-born child's brain. So how do we avoid it? You must limit yourself. Some recommendations have been made to not eat fish over 14 inches long. Others say that you should limit the amount of times you have fish per month. There are many ways to test your mercury levels, but the easiest appears to be requesting a blood mercury test from your physician. You can also be tested for your mercury levels by sending in a sample of your hair follicles.